Yo, yo, hey there. Mario Kart 64, quite a game as a not. I'm sure some of you remember my video a while back of my favorite Mario Kart game, Mario Kart DS. But we're not talking about that one. We're talking about Mario Kart 64. Let me take you back. The year was 1996. Movies like Mission Impossible, Independence Day, Twister, and more were taking over theaters. We got to see the adventures of Arthur, we got to see Goku take on more adventures in Dragon Ball GT, and we also helped Blue with her clues. But on June 23rd in 1996, the world was gifted with the Nintendo 64. Games like Super Mario 64, Pilot Wing 64, Killer Instinct Gold, and more released around this time. Everyone was having fun. Well, when you took turns, everyone was having fun. Some of these games were multiplayer, but only for two players. No four-player games were released yet, which is what the console was specifically designed to do with its four controller ports. So, after a few months of waiting, we were greeted by the four simultaneous player successor to Super Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo, Super Mario Kart R. Yeah, that wasn't gonna fly, so during development it was renamed to what we know it as today, Mario Kart 64. There were a few noticeable differences while the game was still in its beta stage as Mario Kart R, most notably that Kamek was supposed to be in the game, but they later replaced him with Donkey Kong, a much better choice in my opinion. I don't want to upset the Kamek fandom, but I think Donkey Kong makes much more sense. The game was eventually released late in the year, on December 14th, 1996 in Japan, February 10th, 1997 in North America, and June 24th, 1997 in Europe. The reception? It was fantastic! It was a great experience for all who played it. Everyone had fun! The Nintendo 64 needed this game. Things were going okay before, but when this game came out, console sales rose, game sales rose, controller sales rose, everything was going great! There were a few nitpicks about the game, mainly for its graphics, simplicity, and computer racers, but overall, it was still a really decent game. Well, a few lousy reviews aren't going to make me like the game, I need to play it for myself. So, this is Mario Kart 64 for the Nintendo 64. Welcome to Mario Kart Indeed, here we go! We're greeted by a cast of characters that is slightly different from Super Mario Kart. Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad, Yoshi, and Bowser all return for 64, but Koopa Troopa and Donkey Kong Jr. are left out. They're replaced by Donkey Kong, okay, yeah, that's cool, yeah, that's great. And Wario. It makes sense for Donkey Kong Jr. to be phased out in this entry. After the success of the Donkey Kong Country games, it was bound to happen. And Wario? It's my personal belief that Mario Kart 64 helped a ton with Wario's popularity. The only games that had Wario in them at the time were Wario Land, Virtual Boy Wario Land, Wario's Woods, a Satellaview version of Wario's Woods, Wario Blast, and Mario and Wario, a Japan-only title that uses the Super Nintendo mouse. None of these games really took off besides Wario Land, which got a sequel in 98, and more sequels after that. The rest of these games were just kind of existent at the time. They weren't bad games, but they weren't going to get Wario popular anytime soon. So when Mario Kart 64 released and featured Wario, that helped a ton, with him later being included in Mario Sports games, Mario Party games, WarioWare, and later he got Wario World, a 3D beat-em-up adventure on the GameCube. As much as I don't want to stop talking about the best character in gaming, we gotta move on. I like the characters that we got in this game, they pretty much set the standard for the main cast in a way. Now when we get these characters on the racetrack, this feels off. The controls don't feel right. I've raced with go-karts before, and I'm not saying that the newer Mario Kart games capture the feeling of go-kart racing perfectly, because they don't, but these icy physics from Super Mario Kart, Mario Kart 64, and Super Circuit ain't it, Chief. I'm aware that this is only the second entry in the series, and I do apologize to all the people who grew up playing 64, but these controls aren't for me. Now, let's move on to items. Mario Kart 64 changed quite a bit from its predecessor, and it was definitely for the better. This game ditches both the coin item and the feather. Getting rid of both of these I think is a good decision. They both don't provide a whole lot of impact like other items do. Even banana peels, they still provide some sort of defense against offensive items. These two don't do a whole lot. 
which makes it even more confusing considering they added coins back in Mario Kart 7 and 8, and the feather was brought back in 8 specifically for the battle mode. Mario Kart 64 introduces the fake item box to trick opponents into thinking that it's a real item box. In more modern games, it's pretty easy to see the difference, but in 64, if you don't know where the item boxes are by heart, it's very easy to be fooled by these. There's the Golden Mushroom, or the Super Mushroom as it's called in the Operation card, which allows for as many speed boosts as you want in a limited time frame. The Banana Bunch, yes that's what it's called, I may or may not have had to look at the Operation card for this as well, which gives you 5 banana peels. Triple Greens, Triple Reds, and Triple Shrooms, pretty self-explanatory, just 3 of the standard mushrooms and shells. And the last item? The one that changed Mario Kart forever, striking fear into anyone who sees it but giving the sense of mystic power to the beholder. An item that is notorious for being a game ender, and possibly an ender to friendships as a whole. The Blue Spiny Shell. The Blue Spiny Shell when used has a chance of hitting all other players in front of you, but will guarantee to make the player in first place crash. Okay, I've been ranting on and on about the items for a while now, but I do have one more thing to say. The Red Shells have got to be one of the worst items in this game. They're bad, they're bad, they're awful, they suck! I can't get over how bad these things are in 64. If they hit an opponent, that's great, good for you. Lollipop, sticker, here you go, you earned it. The red shells, when you throw them, they don't immediately target and go after the player in front of you. You know, how it should work. Instead, they go ahead and stay in front of you for a little bit. And if they don't see anybody to target, even though they're right in front of them sometimes, they'll just crash into the nearest wall. How fun! One thing we cannot forget is the CPU racers. I didn't realize how bad the rubber banding is in this game. It is so blatantly obvious. I'm at a loss for words. Whenever the racers are ahead of you, they slow down. When you're ahead of the racers, they speed up. One quick search on YouTube will provide you with tons of results and evidence that the rubber banding AI in Mario Kart 64 is some of the worst I've ever seen. Alright, let's take a look at her track selection, the make or break point of any kart racer pretty much. But before we begin looking at the tracks, I wanted to bring some attention to my rating system from the Mario Kart DS video. The overall 10 out of 10 system is flawed to a point, especially if you're biased towards a game like I am with DS. Some people pointed out that I was being too soft with the game and I wasn't critiquing the game as much as I should have, and I kind of agree. So we're going to change it up a little bit, I wanted to make the rating system stricter, but I couldn't think of anything creative, so we're going to roll with a 1 out of 6 rating system. Anyway, here's the tracks. Starting off with the Mushroom Cup, we have the introductory track Luigi Raceway. Not my favorite starter, that would probably go to Mario Kart Stadium, but this one is still pretty good. There's nice wide open space, there's the dark tunnel with the bright yellow lights, and we can't forget the Luigi Hot Air Balloon. This track is pretty alright, it's simple, it's supposed to be. It's good, but it could use some spice. Next up is Moo Moo Farm, another decent track. It's short, sweet, simple, and charming. There aren't any obstacles besides the bridge and the occasional insectivore, but it's an alright track. And of course there's the static cow textures plastered everywhere, it's great! It's similar to the previous track with its simplicity, but it's even more simple because it's fairly short. Still a good time though. Koopa Troopa Beach, yeah I'm sure Koopa Troopa feels great right now, he got kicked out of the roster and now people are driving all over his private beach. Way to go guys. This track is fairly pretty, but unfortunately I don't like this track that much. It just feels so cramped the whole time, you don't want to go into the water because it'll slow you down, and you obviously don't want to hit the wall, so you're just stuck on the thin strip of sand. There's the ramp which is pretty much never worth going on because you have to be at just the right angle with just enough speed, otherwise you'll fall off and crash, or you'll hit the top of the boulder and crash. There's trees that if you crash into them they'll stop you dead in your tracks for a few seconds which is pretty annoying, and there's also the shortcut through the stone which is cool, but it's a similar situation with the big ramp in the boulder, you need just enough speed at just the right angle, otherwise you'll run straight into the rock. Anyway, yeah, I love the setting, but it's just not that great of a track. Lastly for the Mushroom Cup, there's Calamari Desert, pretty much the exact opposite of Koopa Troopa Beach. And I love it! It's big and spacious, lots of room for item play, and it's nice knowing that the red shells won't hit the walls. Oh yeah, and there's... wait, there... there there's a train! Overall, I really like this track. It's not the prettiest, but it functions so much better than Koopa Troopa Beach. Next up, we have the Flower Cup. Starting off, we have Toad's Turnpike. This is a track that will truly test your Mario Kart 64 skills. If you hit any of these vehicles, you slow down immensely. 
Other than that, this is a really fun track. It's simple, which isn't a bad thing. It's pretty good. Also, if this is a turnpike, with the amount of vehicles on it, Toad must be getting rich. Seriously, look at all these people. Toad's gonna be swimming in those coins like Scrooge. Next up is Frappe Snowland. I love like 90% of this track, but the other 10% is the most wretched thing I've ever played. Okay, it's definitely not that bad, but this part with all the snowmen is terrible. In other Mario Kart games where the track is brought back, I can get around these guys pretty easily, but in 64 where the whole game feels like you're on ice? Yeah, this section isn't really fun. The rest of the track is good though, I'm always up for a good snowy track, and while it's not my favorite, it's still good. Then we have Chaco Mountain. This track isn't good, it's ugly, the track design is okay at best, the boulders are annoying, but the thing that annoys me the most about this track is the walls. If you get any sort of air while driving on this track and hit a wall, you crash and lose any form of momentum that you had. It's especially evident in this part of the track right behind the finish line. If it's the last lap and you aren't going in a straight line on these three ramps, this very well could be your pathetic end. Along with the rubber banding CPU racers that tag along right behind you, if you make one little slip up by just looking at the wall, you're done. Lastly, we have Mario Raceway, which is just a really good track overall. It's bright, happy, and just really fun. This track just feels so Mario, it's really charming. With the big mushroom, the pipe tunnel, the giant sign with Mario shouting go at us, I love it. This track is definitely a favorite of mine. The next cup is the Star Cup. Starting off, we have Wario Stadium. This track has a lot of different opinions put upon it about it being good or bad. Some people think it's not that great, while people like me think it's amazing. Though I do see the reasons why people don't think it's that great. It's not the prettiest track, and it's quite long. But the actual track design, I think is well done. It feels like a motocross circuit for go-karts. I do prefer the Wario Stadium from DS, but that version was lacking something very crucial. The copy and pasted Wario faces everywhere. Anyway, yeah, this track is fun, it's got some issues, but it's still a really good time. Sherbet Land, an ice themed track with many penguins. There isn't a lot to this track, it's pretty much just ice. Ice here, ice there, ice everywhere. It's pretty big which I like, especially for these older Mario Kart games. There's a small ice tunnel and yeah, that's about it. There's really not much here. Royal Raceway, another charming track on our hands. I like the big jump and the ability to drive up close to Princess Peach's castle. I like it, there isn't much to say about it, it's good, but it isn't mind-blowing by any means. Bowser's Castle. I love Mario Kart 64's Bowser's Castle. This one truly feels like a castle, and it was the first one to feel like that, especially when you take this into consideration. This one can be really chaotic, especially at the start. There's lava and abundance of thwomps, and there's also the climb up to the top of the castle where you hop down back to the finish line. It's a challenging track, but it's a great time no matter what. Last cup, the special cup. First we have DK's Jungle Parkway. Gonna be honest, I kinda hated this track when I was younger, but that's because I sucked. This track is pretty alright now. There's a big ramp for a big jump. There's a very narrow bridge that leads into a big empty cave. Oh yeah, another neat thing about this track is that if you go off course, people will shoot at you. I didn't see any no trespassing signs driving onto the course, so it's kinda rude to just open fire like that. Anyway, track good. Yoshi Valley, another favorite of mine. It's a giant maze that no matter which way you go, it's the right way. It's my personal belief that everyone has their own way around in this track, which makes it even more special. And we can't forget about the big honkin' Yoshi egg rolling around. Also, this is a track that just has some sort of feeling that can only be experienced by playing it on Mario Kart 64. Mario Kart 8's Yoshi Valley is good, and it's much more polished than 64's, but there's just something about it. I prefer the color palette used in the 64 version, and somehow 64's not so great controls work perfectly with this track. But yeah, anyway, this track is awesome. Banshee Boardwalk. I don't really know what to think of this track. It's built alright, but just look at it. I think it's supposed to be a spooky track, but I don't know man, this to me just looks like some boards in a really dark place. Don't have much to say on this one. <laughs> Lastly, the final track in the Special Cup and the final track in the game, Rainbow Road. It's a long one, taking around 5-6 to six minutes to finish, 
but it's 100% time well spent. There's the rabid cannonball dogs who eat their way through the track and try to give you rabies, there's neon signs of characters and items at every turn, and the music that plays. It's definitely one of the best songs in Mario Kart as a whole. It's not perfect though, my main gripe is that it's way too easy. Sure, there's some rainbow roads like DS and 8s, but this one is by far the easiest. You really can't fall off. The whole track is covered in guardrails, making it possibly one of the safest courses in Mario Kart. I love this track to death though, and while it's not perfect, it's still a legendary track. Alright, that was all 16 tracks from Mario Kart 64. Let's move on to the battle mode, which Mario Kart 64's is what you'd expect. You have three balloons, lose them all, and you lose. Be the last man standing to win. Now, let's see the battle stages, whether good or bad. Big Donut. This is a big donut. Block Fort. This is a- no, I'm joking, I'm joking! Big Donut is a weird but simple battle stage. It's a circle with a few walls and a pit of lava in the center. It- it's just a circle, and that's all I can really say about it. It's simple, which is usually a good thing, but this... It's a circle! Block Fort. I talked about it in my Mario Kart DS video, and yeah, this is the perfect battle map. I don't think it can ever be beaten. It's just perfect. Nice and spacious, it's very open, you can see a lot. It's just really well made, which is why it needs to be brought back. It's only in 64 and DS, it needs to be in a new game. Double Deck. It's alright. It's a little more on the complicated side. If you're only playing with two people, it may be hard to find each other. It's big and spacious like Block Fort, but it's not that open so you can't see other players that well like I mentioned before. So yeah, it's good, but it's not great. The last battle map is Skyscraper. I like this one. It's dark, but it's also colorful at the same time. There's a few gaps where you can fall into, and you can also bump others off the roof, which is better than the giant hole in the center of the map, Big Donut! There's not too much to say about it, but it's fun. Okay, that's pretty much Mario Kart 64. It's not my favorite Mario Kart game, but it certainly shaped Mario Kart and made it what it is today. In my opinion, Super Mario Kart definitely installed the franchise, but it needed a lot of work. 64 provided a lot of help with not only the Mario Kart franchise, but it helped Nintendo and the Nintendo 64 tremendously. This game is awesome. It got a lot of people into Mario Kart, the Nintendo 64, and gaming as a whole. It's a really cool game. If you haven't played it before, give it a shot. You may like it or you may not. Uh, for those who have played it, good for you. I, I guess you can play it again. I I don't I don't really know <laughs>